Hi nerds, and welcome to another episode of Heroes Armory. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at a recent addition to the Heroes Realm, the second legendary hero, so let's just take a bit and get her summoned. I am Guntra, the eldest princess of Niffel. Well, it's Guntra, eldest sibling of Niffel and a legendary hero in the aspect of wind. So we finally have another legendary hero. The question now, though, is what do you do with her? What does she bring to the table and what are the advantages of using her? So on the left, of course, are your stats. And I've gone ahead and highlighted the stats that you want for boons and banes. Greens are boons. Reds are Banes. And from there, we have also have the advantage of looking at her base stat values and also her base kit. And well, <laughs> Guntra is a bit of a rare breed. We have only had one Green Tome Cavalier up to this point, and that of course is someone she's going to have to compete with, so the options are going to have to be stacked, and we're going to have to see how she compares to Cecilia, our other Green Tome unit. When it comes to boons and banes for Guntra, generally you're going to want to aim for, of course, the more vital stats that really allow characters like her to do more damage. Attack and speed, of course, are the highlights. She doesn't really need defense as her, well, her defense is already low enough as is. And of course, another thing to note here is that her res naturally is not very high. And if you do happen to end up with a bane in resistance and you aren't running her in a horse based setting, that means you may not be able to run Resploy as reliably as you would want to, because even with her Tome, she does not have very high resistance, and the normal base value that you want for that is around 30 or higher to at least have a substantial advantage to triggering that, especially on those weaker, less resistant based heroes. So what are the pros of getting Guntra? Well, that's pretty easy to explain. Cavalier unit with Tome. That's a pretty easy situation. You just fit that into any sort of horse emblem team and you're set to go. Also, well, she's a legendary hero, which means that she can bring along her buff of four res and three HP to another unit if you happen to use her blessing on that. And of course, since she's a legendary hero, she also always gets double SP no matter what. And her unique passive in her B slot is insanely powerful and when mixing with their legendary tome can provide some pretty interesting results. And well, well, we'll take advantage of that just a little bit later. The cons, however, is well, she is a legendary hero, which means she only comes from legendary hero banners. So she's not gonna be in the normal pool. And when you compare that to Cecilia, who has really just similar stats, well, a lot of people can easily say it's just easier to go with Cecilia, and I can kind of agree with that. Cecilia is a much more easier to obtain unit than Guntra could be. Well, could ever be, unless she somehow ends up being free. <laughs> so that is probably the only real con is that, well, there's an easier to obtain similar unit to her in Cecilia, which is kind of a shame because, well, I was hoping for a little bit more there. All right, so before we begin with the build itself, it's worth taking a look into Chilling Seal. That, of course, is Guntra's B passive. And with that, um, man, <laughs> there's a lot to talk about here. So the simple basis for this one is if her HP is over 50%, it will then target the unit on the opposite team with the lowest defense and debuff their attack and speed by six. This ability procs at the start of every turn, and to further add to its importance, well, it's global, and it'll update every turn as well. Meaning, if the target with the lowest defense has died, it will move on to the next target with the second lowest defense, and on, and on, and on, until it's all over. And I'm hoping you can see this in the demonstration right now. You can see it, right? Right? Okay, well, basically, the simple rule here is, if two or more units share the same low defense, it will then apply that debuff to all of them. That is kind of, well, that's a little bit terrifying in some ways. 
Granted, I will say that this will probably not happen very often in things like Arena, but in more story-based content like, you know, well, Story Mode, Bound Hero Battles, and Grand Hero Battles where, say, reinforcements and things like that tend to pop up more often, you may see a lot more of this in the future because typically they tend to clone units a bit more and kind of throw them at you. And, well, with those kind of game modes, I can see this ability being... <laughs> Well, pretty fun. And especially when you add in Blizzard, which is essentially the more characters are debuffed, the more damage she will do. So the synergy there is amazing. And it's a good little toy to have in case you don't have a horse emblem team yourself and don't want to run a blade tome. Or even if you have horse emblem and you just want to run Blizzard. It's a great skill and it's something that's really fun to try out. All right, so... Now that all that chilliness is out of the way, let's, uh, let's talk about Gunthra and the possibilities you got here, huh? How should you build her? Well, I'm going to be straight with you. You'll probably want to put her in a horse emblem team as a horse emblem mage because, well, <laughs> giving her constant buffs and allowing her to go crazy like that really helps her out. It's the same sort of situation with Cecilia, where Cecilia kind of doesn't do that great unless she's in a team of other horses and can get things like hones and fortifies. She'll be able to do a lot more outside of Horse Emblem than, say, Cecilia, though, with her supportive abilities, and of course, since she is a green tome unit, she will naturally have an advantage over some more popular units like Reinhardt, so that's a plus. So let's just go with the first build. It's pretty simple. It's a Horse Emblem build, okay? <laughs> From there, it's just, well, simple options. If you want, you can go with a Grand Blade. This will allow her to get buffs and then do even more damage with said buffs. And from there, her A slot can be either things like Fury or Life and Death. I, I honestly would probably go more with Life and Death, but they're both valuable ideas. And from there, in her B slot, I would keep Chilling Seal because Chilling Seal is just a great option to have. And it's a fantastic ability just to mess with the other team too. And from there, her C skill, well, you should keep that clear for things like Fortify or Hone Cavalry because, well, you kind of need to be able to buff your teammates and be a valuable member of the team there, guys. And of course, well, things like Reposition, your normal command skill, and skills like Glimmer to do more damage, or Moonbow in case you really, really need to take on a unit that may just somehow, some way, have more res than you can deal with. I really doubt that will happen. And if you happen to have a sacred seal in Heavy Blade, <laughs> well, might as well bring it along. Those green numbers that you get from Hones and Fortifies are certainly going to boost that, at least, well, Hone will. So, why not take advantage of that nice, nice cooldown reduction? Mmm, so good. Alright, so let's talk about what happens if you don't want to run her in a horse team, because I know a lot of you are probably already asking that question. Well, there's an easy option, and it really just requires not spending very much SP on anything outside of what her base kit already has. You could, of course, probably run Grand Blade and make her something like a Horse Nino that just doesn't have horse buffs, but let's just try and work with Blizzard since it's a very unique tome. First up, let's just say I want to make sure you can understand that you need to have resistance to be able to use ploys. If you happen to have a Resistance Bane, Gunthra, I really highly suggest just running her in Horse Emblem. It's just easier. And of course, <laughs> if you happen to have, you know, certain things like Fury, it's a good option because, again, we want to get that base resistance, which neutrally is 28, which is not that great, up a little bit more. We want to get it up beyond 30. That way, she can trigger her res ploy. From there, you can, you know, of course, Fury, or if you happen to have something a little bit more interesting, maybe Resistance plus two, Attack plus two, or Resistance plus three, one of those options, you can always go with that. Those are a little bit easier and can make better use out of her C slot passive. If you happen to have a boon in Resistance, even better. From there, though, keep Chilling Seal. It's just such a nice option. And of course, well, you can just pair her with people who happen to have debuffs as well and try to run around that. The idea here is you just want to work with what you got. 
and of course you can maybe perhaps change glacies to iceberg if you feel like you want to have it a bit faster. It's just gonna be a bit harder since, well, <laughs> she thrives really, really well in a horse emblem team. But that doesn't mean that you can't use her. If you pair her well with some debuffers on her own team, maybe a dancer as well to take advantage of this, you will do great. Alright, so before we end off this video, let's talk about combinations. Because a lot of you have been asking me about team synergies with Gunthra, and well, let's just start with the easy one, Horus Emblem. <laughs> For this, I really can't say too much, I'm just going to give you an example of what I tend to use when it comes to Horus Emblem. Pretty basic stuff. But a mixture of strong melee and mage can really help her out. I find she does a little bit better than, say, a whole mage team. <laughs> Simply all blade domes, but if you want to go with that, it's a great option. Sigurd stands out as a really great combination, and, well, that's just because of his survivability. You, you know, you can also work around her other tome in case you want to work, you know, on debuffs and things like that. Maybe just run someone with a, you know, attack smoke seal or something like that, and you should be fine. Honestly, all of these options here when it comes to Horse Emblem are just viable. As long as you can get a hone and a fortify on her, she will do great. Now, outside of Horse Emblem, there are a lot of units that she can synergize really well with, with her base tome and, of course, her B skill slot. Those are characters such as Loot or Arvis. They are kind of prime examples of units that you can dish out debuffs without having to be close to the enemy. This means, well, at least in Loot and Arvis's case, it's typically two debuffs from a massive distance because they technically have ploys in their weapons as well as ploys themselves. And from there, well, we can talk about Brave Lynn and Sigurd. They technically are very strong units even outside of Horse Emblem. And they have things like attack smokes and, you know, smoke effects, which will debuff units and allow you to take advantage of Blizzard much more effectively. And, well, in our last slot, I'm just going to show Saizo, but there are a lot of dagger units out there that can really take advantage and allow Gunthra to do a lot more damage. But the one thing you really want to take a look at are some of the other dagger weapons. Just to give an example, Saizo there, he has smoke daggers, and when you refine that, it is negative six to all stats. And that, of course, has the smoke effect as well, so it triggers on the target and then spreads out from there. That can be devastating, and it would really, really push Blizzard over the edge for those characters that she just can't hit with her B-slot passive. So, let's talk about the final word. Is Gunthra worthwhile? I will say her B-slot passive and her Blizzard Tome are pretty unique ideas, and they're really fun to use when you do get her. But, outside of that, it just feels a lot like a toy. <laughs> a toy you can get, and when you get it, it's fun. But, you don't really need that toy. <laughs> Gunthra is essentially that. She's a cool character, and her legendary status does add a bit more to that. But, do you really need another Green Tome Cavalier? Do you really need this passive, this skill, these synergies? The simple answer is no, not really. In a horse-based team, Cecilia will be fine. And outside of that, well, you're probably not using Cecilia outside of Horse Emblem. But still nonetheless, if you do get her, if you do get Gunthra and you decide to use her, she will not fail you. Her B passive is a lot of fun and her Blizzard Tome is insane. But well, it's just you're playing with your toy. That's simply all it is. But, well, still nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been a lot of fun trying to make this. I went through and tried to put as much work as I could into this. I don't know if this is going to be going up <laughs> before the actual banner with Guntra ends. Oh, God. But I hope if you did get her, this, you know, you found a little bit more information out of this than, you know, before. <laughs> still, nonetheless, if you guys did find this helpful at all, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like. Maybe subscribe if you want more content like this. Tell me what you thought of this format for Heroes Armory, and if you'd like to see more of it in the future. Well, for now, though, I'm signing out. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you soon, and I hope to see you all in Asker. Or... Niffle.
I don't even know where I am anymore.